Hey guys, Shreya this side. Welcome to Concept and Coding. And today, in the first part of Spring Boot Security, we will be understanding its architecture, right? But before we start, if you haven't gone through this video, kindly have a look because in this one, I have explained about different type of attacks, right? CSRF, Access, SQL injection. I have also explained about cards. So this will give you a better understanding, like why exactly we want security. Okay, so now I am assuming that you already know about these attacks. Now we need to protect our resources from these attacks. How we can do that? Definitely we have to do authentication and authorization. Authentication means verify who you are. Or in simple terms, we can say that how I would say that, yes, hey, I am Shreyans Jain. How I can tell, I will provide my username and password, something, and I will tell somebody that, yes, this is me. So verify who you are. Authorization is check what you are allowed to do. So maybe I am authenticated, but I am only allowed to view, but not allowed to update. So that is the, uh, you can say that it's come under the scope of authorization. Check what only you are allowed to do. Even though you are authenticated, you are only allowed to view the page. You don't allow to update it or make any changes. Okay. So these two things has to be properly handled in our application so that we can protect our customers from these attacks. So, and yeah, that's where Spring Boot security comes into the picture. Very, very important. And that's where we have to first understand its architecture before even we jump into different type of authentication. Also, this is its architecture, but here if you see, it's just an extension of this one filters. So in video number 18, we have already seen what are filters, right? And where exactly they fit. So when the first request comes in, it goes to the servlet container from servlet container to filter chain. There are multiple layers of filters, filter one, filter two, filter N. Okay. And from this filter, it goes to a particular dispatcher servlet and from dispatcher servlet, then interceptor and then interceptor to actual the controller where our business logic lies or where our APIs are present. So now spring security, where does it fit into this? Now, if you are already covered filters and you are clear with the filter chain. Now, whenever you enable the spring security in your application. Now here, if you see, there is something called security filter chain, get added into your one of the filter chain. So you still have multiple filters in your application, filter one, filter two, filter N. But one of the filter get also added which is security filter. So security filter is generally we can say that security filter chain because there are multiple security filters get added. Okay, consider it is like here, consider it like this, filter chain. Here you have filter one, filter two, filter three, like this filter N. Consider this out of filter three to this one. This is your security filter chain. Like these filters are added because of security, because you opted for security. And since you opted for security, these filters will uh, Spring Boot will add it. Okay. In the existing list of filters. Okay. So first thing is clear, right? Where exactly the security filter chain fits. It's just nothing but inside whatever the filter chain you have. It just get fitted into that only. So there are multiple filters, security filters. Okay. Now, before I go further, like what are each of this filter? There are different authentication method like form based where you provide username, password. You have like a stateless one, like basic authentication, JWT. OAuth. Okay. And there could be many also. So for each authentication method, for each authentication method, there is a different filter involved. Okay. So 
it's not so let's say what i'm trying to say that maybe if you are opting this authentication method form based then only these two are eligible all are not eligible okay let's say you wanted to go with jwt then it's maybe these two let's say there would be some another jwt filter let's say these two username password and these two only would be applicable then this and this would not be applicable similarly if you go with the basic authentication then this is not applicable this is not applicable only this is applicable so my point here to tell you that depending upon which authentication method you are choosing which we will see later based on that that particular filter is get processed it's not like or uh, each request will go through this then this then this then this till end no okay so in if uh, you are choosing basic authentication then this will be skipped this will be skipped only this will get executed okay don't worry about each of this filter as when we will do each and every authentication method we will understand its uh, filter also okay but for now try to understand the flow what happens when the flow comes in now let's say a request comes in it goes to the filter and since you are opted for security so will it goes to one of the security filter also now let's say it goes to one of the security filter then what's the next step it will pass the request to authentication manager now here if you see that in the authentication manager except one parameter which is of authenticate object authenticate so this authenticate object is like contains multiple fields again this is not the right time to dig deeper into each and every object we will see when we will do each and every authentication uh, methods but for now understand like very high level what is the flow architecture each authentication each authenticate object contains like is authenticated is authenticated true false okay so currently it's at this point of time it is false it's not authenticated what are the roles okay currently it would be let's say empty yeah i'm just saying so it is you can say that this authenticate object could be partial or incomplete at this point of time and it is not user is not authenticated so whenever the request comes in yeah it will pass to the filters and then it will pass through the security filter chain and depending upon the authentication method we are following it will goes to one of the filter and the filter will create this authenticate object currently it would be false it's not authenticated it will pass that request to authenticate manager authenticate manager is an interface and provider manager is the implementation it's a default implementation okay so what this provider manager or you can say that authentication manager does this has the knowledge that my request is coming from this filter i have to pass it to which provider which provider okay so you can say that it's a bridge between the filter and the provider so this provider manager get a request authenticate with the authenticate object which is currently partial it has the business logic which knows that okay this is the filter and this is the authentication method i need to pass it to this provider and it will delegate the authentication to one of the provider there are multiple providers it will delegate one of to the one of the provider for example if you are using username password or you can say that session based session or session or you can say that stateful authentication method then it will pass the request to dao authentication provider which takes care of username password and also manage the user session similarly let's say if you are uh, following stateless and processing jwt then this provider manager will delegate the request to which jwt authentication provider similarly if you are following oauth it will pass to oauth we will see that later when we will cover each and every authentication method but at least at this point of time we know that okay 
if the request comes filter chain one of the filter chain will get invoked this will pass the request to authentication manager authentication manager implementation is provider manager it nothing but a bridge between filter and one of the provider which actual does the work or actual does the authentication okay for example this dao authentication provider like let's say username password okay user provide the username password so it actually does the work so this password is you know that spring always store the password in hashed form okay so now if whatever the password is coming from user it has to be encoded so it has proper integration with password encoder so raw password is hash during registration and during validation raw password is hash and then only compared so this only takes care of all the logic now so it first do the hashing of the password then it will fetch existing so you are passing currently now a my password is x y z but previously when you created it you created x y let's say capital g so it has to fetch the existing details also right so that will take care of it so it also has integration with user detail service again it's an interface user detail service has two flavor in memory and jdbc user detail manager in memory means all this username password is stored in memory okay so it's you can say that it's a temporary but if you are want to store it in the db you can use jdbc user detail manager where the username password is stored in the db so it will load it and it will do comparison whatever user is now sending us and whatever we have received earlier are they matching or not based on that it will again return back with the authenticate object only but now it will be complete authenticate true false okay and ultimately authentication manager return back to the filter with the fully authenticated response whether it is authenticated yes or no and this filter if it authenticated it will store the object into security context if authentication is false it will throw bad credentials but if it is fully authenticated like yes it this user is authenticated true this one of the filter which uh, which was invoked it stores that authenticate object into security context now this security context will get added into your request goes into the dispatcher sublet if you have the interceptor it will goes to the interceptor and ultimately it will reach to the controller your api so at this point of time your api also has this security context one more thing i just want to highlight again since we have multiple authentication method like form based like basic authentication jwt oauth consider this architecture as a template today okay because for each authentication method we will again draw this architecture but for each flow there would be some minor changes okay just for example for form based login okay you are doing certain extra steps here but let's say for basic authentication you are totally missing this step you don't need this step you don't need to put it so i am just giving you one uh, example okay we will i don't want to jump into each authentication method what we are doing what we are not doing but i am just giving you one example that maybe depending upon each authentication method we might be doing one of the step or we might be skipping or doing extra in this architecture itself so consider this architecture as a base and for each authentication method we will run through this base template or architecture itself okay which filter get invoked which filter get skipped why 
and which filter got invoked from this filter what exactly happened in the authenticate object which provider got invoked what that provider do, does actually inside okay what's the response or fully authenticate object looks like okay and what else data we put into security context and what exactly the controller uses it like okay so we will connect the dots for each authenticate method later but for now just understand this is a flow when any request comes in and have you have integrated the spring spring boot security in your application okay so in a spring boot secure in your spring boot project if your uh, project is already present which we are already this playlist is all going so i think by this time you already have set up the spring boot project so you need to add the below dependencies okay so these two dependency you can add one is spring boot starter security so this spring boot security uh, dependency is like add feature like authentication authorization and the filter so this filter chain will get included this all filter chain this authentication manager provider everything get included and there is something called spring session jdbc this is only required this is optional it's not mandatory this is only required if you want to maintain session based authentication and you want to store into the db if you want to store into the ultimately db then you need it but we will see that when we will actually do uh, a stateful a stateful authentication so for now you can you can say that you don't need it you only need this one but if you are setting up a new project in the spring initializer itself you can set up spring web and you can take spring security so with the spring security you will get this okay and only if you want db support uh, for the session wise you can take it but again this is for now not required we will see when we will do a state a stateful authentication okay now we will go ahead with each and every authentication method in depth considering this as a base architecture okay guys thank you bye